What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the DCO Sourcecast, episode 207? 207. 7th episode. We're doing, we're going, we're going pretty good here still. Going pretty good here still. Uh, last week and all that, uh, y'all know we, we didn't have a lot of news and all that. This week, we do have some news, which we'll get into here in a little bit. Um, first off, uh, you know, give you guys an update on what's been going on this week with me. Um, not much really. <laughs> uh, I've uh, started to, I finished out the collections on my seventh tune. Yeah. Wow. Finished all the, the, the launch collections and all that, completed that feed out. Um, on my seventh character now, so far, um, working on uh, doing others as well and everything. I mean, like I said, I've got 18 characters. I'm trying to get them all to like the high 170s before Amazon Fury three hits. Uh, that's heroes and villains. It's 11 heroes and yeah, 11 heroes and seven villains. So I got a lot of work ahead of me still, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually running low on heroes here. I've started working on a fire tune and everything, which uh, I'll probably be working on over the weekend, uh, getting geared up. Um, hopefully, uh, so I'll have another tank on the hero side. Um, and, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, Jareth. Um, but, yeah, so... Yeah, working on that. Working on that still. Um, actually, I uh, went in and uh, was healing a uh, DWF on my sorcery um, character and everything. And I want to do a loadout for this healing, this, for that sort of sorcery healing. I want to do a video for the sorcery healing loadout that I've got, but I'm holding off on it for a while here because uh, of things that are um, coming down the road here because I know we've got uh, stats matters coming up and everything like that and I don't know what all is going to be changing with that so uh, you may be seeing a lot of loadout guides from me here in the future <laughs> with that um, we'll have to see how that all uh, pans out and everything first before that happens um, but until then though well yeah like I said we'll have to see uh, once again Crappy's not here this week I don't know he said he's on call with his job with the city. Well, recap. Brock and Solo, you guys heard that. Heard that part, I guess. Um, uh, but, yeah, when, whenever, uh, you know, we actually, you know, whenever we have, like, you know, bigger things come down the road and everything like that, uh, obviously I'm going to try and have folks on here, you know, so we can hash out, talk about the stuff. And everything. Um, Stats Matter is going to be one of them. PvP updates, you know, will be another one. You know, new new content being introduced. Uh, be other things as well. Especially, you know, and especially if they introduce some, you know, big marketplace thing like time capsules or something like that. Um, we'll definitely, uh, I'm definitely going to try and have people on here to talk about those things. Uh, of course, you know, that all is, is all kind of determined on what, you know, is being released that week by um the devs and um you know by by dcuo and also how how much of a heads up you know i get uh <laughs> in regards to their announcements because sometimes they announce on friday nights <laughs> you know whenever they are uh um uh, whenever they uh, release new stuff, especially when they're releasing new stuff on test. However, this week, uh, we actually had a day's head start on the test server um, this week here. this is I'm getting pretty good with these segues. You guys are going to love this. Uh, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like a segue master here. Uh, yeah, so we've got this new update here with the uh, update 64 is currently on the test server. Um, went up on there yesterday for all you guys who did not notice or see. Um, oh, Meps is planning a big announcement for five minutes after my stream ends. Excellent. Excellent, Meps. Great, great. Glad, glad to hear. Glad, glad to hear it. <laughs> uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Game Update 64 is on the test server right now. What do we get in, what are we getting in Update 64? Well, first of all, if you guys were seeing, uh, on Twitter... The other day, uh, Mevs put out a poll on at DCO's Twitter 
on there asking what folks would like to see in this next update, in Update 64. If they would like to see the Halloween event, if they would like to see Survival Mode, or if they would like to see the return of Exceptional Recovery Kits. Well, guess what, folks? We're getting all three of those. All three of those are in Update 64, along with a lot of other things as well. But we'll get into the details right here. Uh, of course, uh, Update 64, uh, the Halloween event, has returned with new base items, feats, and styles. Um, it's uh, basically the same event and everything. Uh, we'll get into some de details about that uh, later down the road. Um, later down here in the uh, messaging and the patch notes here. Um, the vault, of course, we're going to have the Halloween vault. And the uh, shop uh, Skeets Boutique for the latest in scare scareware. Scareware. Uh, <laughs> tricks, treats, and creepy items. For your base or legal. Um, <laughs> so, and then of course, you know, we're also getting survival mode. Owen Science Cells is back. So, everybody out there who uh, missed out on any um, Owen, Owen themed uh, lair items and everything and all that can uh, go into Owen Science Cells survival mode and try and get those. And of course, you know, you guys want to get your progress point for round 10 this year. Um, 2000, it's going to be 2016 again. I wonder how they're going to do that. Because that's going to be two 2016 titles in one year for one survival mode. I don't know if anybody's caught that or not. Uh, <laughs> but with this year's uh, survival mode, um, they have um, new awesome uh, exo pants for rounds 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. They also have a new custom exo back for rounds 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. The, the exo back is the new style. So that's you know you get you get hey grid, so you're, so you're gonna get uh, you know your um, uh, your iron, your bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Platinum will be your round ten. You get a platinum back style. Uh, I'm not sure what it looks like yet. Uh, see requirements are going to be uh, eight players, combat rating 173. They recommend 175. Um, and then they're doing some more early game rework, uh, continuing their effort to make the beginning of the game better for the new players. Uh, they've cleaned up and simplified many of the early missions in the game. Uh, for details, see the early game section in the notes below. And then, of course, you know, like I said, the exceptional recovery kits. All bosses in PvE content have a small chance of dropping an exceptional recovery kit. So exceptional recovery kits are back. Okay, so there's going to be a title for round 20 now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Beps is in the chat here saying uh, there's going to be a, a title for round 10 and a title for round 20. Now, my question is, though, is the round 10 title going to be different for this time around than it is than it was for earlier this year when Owen dropped? That's, that's the question I've got. Michael Grid wants a championship belt waste style as a survival mode reward. That should be a round 20 reward right there for all of them. So yeah, I'm curious about a different title for round 10 this year for Owen. Um, see here, uh, other things in the patch notes here, combat, uh, the cast time for dodge has been reduced and you are no longer vulnerable to interrupt for a short time after dodging. Also, dodge can no longer be immediately canceled by blocking. Uh, a lot of you guys may know about this, um, uh, thing here, this has been kind of an issue in regards to, like, PvP and all that, so, you know, a lot of people are, you know, annoyed with the roll spammers, um, in PvP, you know, this is a uh, work to fix it. Uh, there is, however, a post I saw in the testing feedback uh, where somebody was talking about how there's still ways to uh, <clears throat> cancel the roll by, you know, hitting um, escape or hitting the uh, opening the chat tab up, <clears throat> which uh, is mostly, you know, done on, you know, for keyboard and mouse users on the PC and everything. Uh, Meps did respond to that and say they're looking into that and everything. So hopefully uh, they're able to iron out this little bit of an exploit um, on the uh, PC side of things to uh, make it so that doesn't happen. Um, see, a player Brainiac Battleship, Brainiac's terminals will no longer levitate. Never saw that before, but that's pretty funny. Um, 
Uh, early game mission updates. They obviously it's a huge list, folks. It's a huge list um, of uh, early game updates they've done here um, to uh, streamline things for uh, leveling your characters. Um, so here, recent reset content loot locks for group members. Uh, players should once again be able to unlock treasure locks for both of themselves and others when in a group. Um, this has been a bug that's been going on for a little bit lately. Uh, the seasonal witching hour event will now grant up to 10 spooky bites a day. That's 10 spooky bites a day from just the event. Um, I believe it's four from the open world. I'm not reading the entire list, Jareth. No, there's, there's no way that that list is huge. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Skeet's boutique prices have been updated from the previous years. So while we're getting more bites and all that from the uh, spooky bites from the event, uh, and the season, you know, run the seasonal and all that. The prices have been adjusted up to uh, fix that, um, to uh, balance things out a little bit here. Because everybody always had an issue with the witching hour event because the the rewards on it was was way too low for a lot of people. So now they've adjusted it up to where uh, that candy corn <laughs> candy corn aura. <laughs> oh my god, grit. Uh, no, there is something nice and cool here, which I'm going to show here uh, in a little bit here. As soon as I get done with these patch notes here. Um, uh, see here, so, uh, subtitles, uh, localized subtitles should once again display in sync with cinematics. Uh, time capsules, stabilizer fragments in the currency tab will now graphically show the incremental fill of each additional fragment earned. And uh, when the player has earned enough stabilizer fragments to make a single key, a notified text will be displayed so the player is aware uh, full key has been earned. And as far as traits, uh, as traits are purchased in any traits menu, the tooltip for the purchase trait should refresh and display the correct description. So there you go, folks. That's in the patch notes right there. Uh, I want to show you this right here right quick. You know, as you all know, Torakumu, if you guys don't know who Torakumu is, he uh, puts up YouTube videos on it. He's always like one of the first guys gets on, hops on the test server to show off, um, uh, stuff from the test server of, uh, you know, what new lair items we're getting, especially when it comes down to seasonal, starting off with these cats. And I'm just going to just play this. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have lots of cats. You can be that crazy cat lady, Rooted. Uh, <laughs> who, uh... <laughs> um... You can be that crazy cat lady uh, who, uh, on DCUO, uh, running around with all, like hundreds of cats in your lair as much as you want to. Uh, I believe the cat is uh, Tickle, which is the name of the cat, is uh, replacing. These are the uh, lair items here. He um, is going to be um, replacing the Butility Belt as the rare drop in the event. Or you can also purchase Tickle from the vendor for 100 Spooky Bites. So, I know that may sound like a lot to everybody out there, but you run the event 10 days, bam, you got your, you got your cat. And, you know, you may, have, you may actually get two, because you may get lucky and get one as a drop. You never know. Uh, yeah, there needs to be a litter box lair item now. Great, I completely agree. <laughs> but, uh, as you can see right here, these are the uh, lair items that are coming in here. Um... No, some of them are really cool, really, really cool. I really like some of them. Uh, I, I think we may have already, he may have already shown the Gothic window. Uh, we also get a new uh, title as well, The Strange, in here. And then uh, here he is, uh, we get to see him placing the cat. And, uh, yeah, the Tickle Totem. Place it down in your lair. You place it anywhere in your lair. Uh, and uh, he'll follow you around. Um, and I believe, I believe if you guys have the, uh, April Fool's briefing, he'll chase that briefing around in your lair. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't, this, this is awesome. I'm sorry. I, I was like, uh, I, I can't wait. I want a dog now. I want a dog. Exactly. Illusion. Exactly. I want a dog. I want crypto. I want a dog in my lair now. Um, see, so yeah, okay, and of course, uh, Terakuma was also kind enough to hop on there and get a look at the new, uh, styles that, um, we're going to be getting with this update.
Okay, uh, as I was saying, uh, <laughs> Torakuma was also uh, kind enough to put out a video um, showing off the styles for the uh, coming in to us for the seasonal here. Um, which we'll go ahead and show this video here for you right here. Uh, starting off with the uh, Wicked Hellbeast Skull, um, which is pretty cool. Um, it's just a head item and all that. It's got the, the horns and all that. But, you know, if you guys get yourself a uh, wicked looking, uh, you know, villain or wanting to really go out and scare people for Halloween, that is the head style to use right there. That looks badass. I like the open part of the skull. Um, and then for like a face piece and all that, they added this hell beast jaw, which is like a jaw piece for the mask. So. That is pretty badass looking. Right there. I wonder if it moves whenever your character talks. Or if it would. I don't know. I don't know. But then for the uh, back, uh, they added this uh, greasy spine, um, <clears throat> which goes on your back. That looks pretty badass. Your, the actual spinal cord glows, it looks like. And then um, he changed up the, the, the colors and all that. Everything, you can change the color on pretty much everything on the head. And um, the back as well. Which is pretty awesome. Well, you know, Grid, how sometimes you know, you go up and you interact with somebody in the game. And, you know, you, you'll see your character's mouth move. Uh, sometimes that happens. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's a thing. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the, uh, the, um, seasonal stuff there. Uh, I'm a huge fan of season. Obviously you know, there's a lot of really cool, uh, lair items that they're putting out this year for a seasonal, um, you know, especially with that, that dog on cat, I, that, that cat just opens up all sorts of possibilities because now I want to have, you know. I want to have a bunch of dogs. Can you imagine, you know, walking in with a whole bunch of little puppies running around in your lair? That's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm more of a dog person. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, Rudy could have a bunch of, you know, Canadian beavers running around up there in her lair. Uh, you know, if she wanted. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to yell at the leader. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Um, <laughs> raccoon lad could have a bunch of raccoons running around in his lair. Uh, you know, I mean, it's the, 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 possibilities are endless, um, <laughs> with, uh, the la different, uh, types of pets we could have, you know, for our lairs, you know, it'd be pretty awesome. Uh, bat side wants lions. I, you know, I, I, I could go for some like saber tooth tigers or something like that. That would be awesome. Or the lions as well. Um. Uh, I don't know if uh, elephants would work or not. Uh, maybe uh, we we could end up having uh, you know like a bestiomorph pet. One of the bestiomorphs, one you know one of Cersei's bestiomorphs. That would be pretty cool. Um, Grid wants to have his own crappy. <laughs> oh man, that would be. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely, um, if you guys want to hop on tests and all that, test that stuff out there and everything, there's lots of things on there other than just the seasonal to test out, of course, um, all the, uh, leveling content, uh, Grid needs a talking parrot, so he has someone to talk to when he is in the game, aw, aw, rooted, We talk to him all the time, though. <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> um, Cerberus Lair Pet. Uh, if it was, like, you know, shrunk down Illusion, I would be 100% behind that. 
I don't think Cerberus would fit in my lair <laughs> in our lairs though. <laughs> I think Cerberus would take up an entire dive lair. Um <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's all the stuff that's on test there. So make sure you guys, you guys, especially if you guys want to test out that leveling content, um, hop on there and test that out. More things to come uh, down the road still. Obviously, I know we are experiencing kind of a lull in content release here. Um, we're not going to be seeing Amazon Fury 3 until later this year, towards the end of the year. However, if you guys follow SJ, a.k.a. Nerd of Prey, on Twitter... You would have noticed that she has finished up. Uh, you know, she or she she was doing some work with a certain voice actress, who does a certain villainess. Villainess. Vill villainess. Is it vi certain villain, female villain, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the game, uh, um, who's uh, known as Michelle Forbes. Michelle Forbes, for all of you guys out there who don't know, is the one who voices Cersei, exactly. Um, Michelle Forbes also known for other things. Michelle Forbes, she uh, played the Marianne character, who was like like the, the, the villain character, I think, in, I believe it was in season two of uh, True Blood. She also played uh, another role, she's a little bit more, she maybe, maybe, oh my god. Drop frames, oh man. Another thing she may be known, uh, you guys may know her for, she played Ensign Roe Laren in Star Trek The Next Generation. Yes, I see that grid. It's it's exploit it's exploit. <sighs> Can we just do a conference call? Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, Ensign Rolaren, also known as uh, from uh, yeah from Star Trek: The Next Generation. There, um, that gif is just way too stupid. Uh, yeah, you guys may have to refresh to see any video, even though there's not really any video. Um, just me sitting here talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's another thing, too. Yeah, SJ wasn't really uh, out there recording in Los Angeles. She was out there catching Pokemon that she can't catch in Austin. Um, <laughs> that's another thing, if you notice on her Twitter. <laughs> she caught an Onyx. I haven't even seen an Onyx yet. Um, it's kind of annoying. Uh, but that's the perks of traveling for your job, I guess. So, um, you get to catch, you get to catch Pokemon you don't normally get to find. And we're buffering again. X split sucks. Drop frames detected. Stream quality. Uh, it's just freaking. Alright, can you guys still hear me at least? When this is going on? That's my question. Getting dropped I'm getting dropped frame rate notices. Oh, you guys can't hear me. Oh, okay. 
All right. <laughs> well, I mean, there's nothing really going on in the video anyways, folks, so... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so, yeah, so I guess, uh, she's, uh, finished up, um, or she's working on, or has finished up voiceover work for Amazon Fury 3, uh, with Michelle Forbes, at least, so, and I believe she's also done with Susan Eisberg, who is the voice of Wonder Woman, which, uh, we all love her, um, she's just awesome, uh, yeah, I blame PS3 for this also, Grid, this is the PS3's fault. <laughs> anyways uh so yeah so uh work on amazon fury 3 is well underway well underway the voiceover work apparently already being done um and who knows what other little sneak peeks we may get to see uh down the road here i'm really looking forward to it though the penultimate not that the penultimate amazon fury 2 would have been the penultimate this is the finale of the amazon fury um, story arc, the, uh, one of the, the, the last of the, uh, trilogies that they announced, um, a couple of years ago now, <laughs> uh, so, uh, at SOE Live, so this, this is awesome, this is awesome, uh, what kind of storylines we're going to see down the road, I cannot wait to find out, I don't know if they're going to be introduced in trilogies or not again, um, Part of me hopes so, but part of me wants them to see them go off into other, you know, areas of DCUO. Um, part of me wants to see them go back to, like, you know, just like regular street-level crime stuff. You know what I mean? We kind of got a taste of that a little bit with uh, the Harley's Heist stuff. Um, uh and everything, but um, some street level crime stuff and all that. I'd like to see that. You know, you know, see how it's going up against you know, you know, Bane, you know, the Penguin, you know, and like uh, mobs of his, you know, of their henchmen and stuff like that. Uh, going up against, uh, even just going up against Lex Luthor. I mean, just Lex Luthor, not future Lex Luthors or anything like that. But going up against Lex Luthor and all that. You know, of course, we get to hear James Marsden do his. Uh, Spectacular Lex Luthor voiceovers. Um, uh, let's see what, who else who else is out there. You know, introduce some you know new characters. Don't I bring some new characters or uh, you know less known or less lesser used characters in? Uh, like bring in the question. Um, I'd like to see a uh, Justice League Dark tie-in. That would be pretty cool. Bring back some John Constantine stuff. That would be pretty awesome. Um, maybe we finally get to see Dead Man uh brought into the game um you know maybe we'll see some suicide squad stuff come in i have a feeling us we you know you know uh see uh you know of course you know with the tv series getting ready to uh pick back up and kick off their new seasons this year here or starting this month i believe um this month or next month you know with the flash arrow supergirl uh, and Legends of Tomorrow, not to mention Trex's favorite show, Gotham. Yes, that's right. Trex's favorite show, Gotham. There, and uh, there's talks of a Black Lightning TV show going to be on Fox. We'll see how that one that lasts on Fox, but... Um... Okay, Greg. Greg, PG-13, sir. PG-13. <laughs> The PG-13 podcast. Um, real quick, though, there was a question uh, I saw on the forums here. I know you guys probably are not going to be able to see it because the uh, it's still showing it's buffering for me here at least. Um, but there was a post on the forums uh, from somebody asking for clarification on Stats Matters uh, and exactly what it means for us to... Oh yeah, hunter, more hunters and booster gold. I definitely want to see some more booster gold. Bad side, um, but uh, yeah, he's wanting to stat. Uh, his question is: uh, uh, the post reads here. Um, I've heard about the removal of CR differential, but can I get more clarification? Recent talks between the DC community has had people saying that skill point will not actually matter. Uh, stats matters will actually be the balancing of lower CR players to be able to contribute to the group. Um, that's his quote. 
Uh, can you get a clarification on this, please? Uh, that's not entirely accurate. In fact, that, that's almost that's almost a misleading statement right there uh, with what this good gentleman just said here. Uh, from what I understand, from what has been discussed, um, stats matters. All right, is basically it's going back to the way things used to be. All right, for everybody out there that doesn't understand what stats matters means, it's going, it's going back to the way things were before the CR differential. It's going back to the way things were before the CR differential dropped. So the way things are right now, now the higher your CR is, like the more damage you're going to be doing, the more uh, damage you can take. You know, that's that's the, the main things there with the CR differential. Um, but with stats matters, okay, it's going, what, what's going to matter more is your actual, uh, stats. It was, what's going to matter more is your actual stats. So like if your defense, if you have uh 172 CR and your defense is just, this is just random numbers I'm throwing out here. Your, your CR is 172, your defense is 10,000, all right, you're going to be able to take more damage, or you're going to be able to mitigate more damage than somebody with 175 CR and only 9,000 defense. So, I mean, even though they're 3 CR higher than you, they got better gear than you do, your defense stat is higher than theirs, so you're going to be able to take more damage than them. Same thing on the damage side, where you will have uh, folks that um, you will have folks that have like a might and precision. All right, say you have one seventy two CR and you have fourteen thousand might, but the other guy has one seventy five CR and he only has ten thousand might. Do you the guy with fourteen thousand might should be doing more damage than the guy? with uh, 175 CR. Um, same thing goes crossways for heels, um, as well as going uh, across for uh, your trolling. Um, stream is not down. I'm, I'm showing buffering here. As far as I know, you guys can still hear me. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, that's the main way it's going to work. Uh, it's basically making it so that, you know, once you get to that 175 CR, you know that, your stats are going to be mattering even more towards your overall stats. You know, the, the stats that you get from skill points and everything like that are going to be mattering more towards... Uh, your uh, gear and everything like that, and uh, I don't. I've not heard anything yet, Jared, about um, skill points possibly changing after stats matter. I um, uh, can't really speak to that because I don't. I, I don't know anything about it. Um, but we, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. There's lots of big changes coming up. Lots of big changes coming up uh, that uh, I don't know about and I can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um well i mean great that's you know who will have better stats after stats matter a guy just off to bring a ship or treks uh i don't think that mattered either way stats matter or the CR differential so yeah i don't know but yeah big changes are coming uh you know some, some I do know about that I can't talk about. Others I don't know about that I wish I could. <laughs> but I don't know about them. I don't know anything about them. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, but that is about it for this podcast here. Uh, you guys, don't forget, um, for you guys just now getting here, I want to remind you guys to make sure you go to the test server. If you are a tester, go to the test server, test out the new stuff and everything. Um, 
as far as uh, the new, the uh, Halloween seasonal. Uh, Owen Science Cell Survival Mode is up. Um, uh, Jared, I'm going to hop on. I'm going to talk to you. I'll, I'll send you a mail about that tonight. Um, and don't forget, folks, that the Exceptional Recovery Kits... Uh, no, Meps, Meps was trolling me, Gargamond. Meps was trolling me. <laughs> I made I made a crack about Meps uh, earlier. I made a crack about Meps, um, you know, them waiting until, uh, you know, late Friday evenings to make big announcements. And uh, so I have no way of, you know, being able to... Uh, gather other people on here to talk about those the things that they announce um so meps you know was joking by saying he was going to stream something 10 minutes after my stream ended so whatever meps <laughs> but so yeah meps isn't streaming anything after of course oh man i'd have to, i'd kill him if if, uh, if i saw dc yoda went live i would have to scream uh, but yeah, make sure you guys, if you guys are testers and like, hop on test, find out, uh, check these, uh, changes out and everything, especially the, um, early leveling content stuff. Um, lots of changes there, as you can see. Uh, no, he was trolling me. Jareth, he was trolling. He's not announcing anything. He's probably sitting at home right now, listening to this buffered stream, laughing at all of you. Because you took him seriously. <laughs> that or the he's getting ready to freaking just like put DCUO's stream live for about five seconds just to freak me out. Yeah, and nobody in chat got banned tonight either. Well, you know what? You know what? It was great. Not enough Canada jokes. Not enough Canada jokes. That's why. That's probably why. Of course, I don't see her in the chat anymore, so you, we might be safe. <laughs> we might be safe. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys go to test. Update 64, Witching Hour Seasonal, Halloween Seasonal is on there. Go test all that stuff out. Uh, switch the Halloween Seasonal is on test, so that means, you know what that means, folks? It's coming soon. It's coming soon. You know that. You know, you can hop on there, get all those those cool lair items, get the new styles and everything. Get yourself a pet cat, or run around your lair. I'm gonna get one cat. I'm gonna get one of those cats, and then when they make a dog one, they release a dog pet for our lairs, which you know, you know, hoping they do. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get like a dozen of those dogs just to chase that cat around in the lair. I can't. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, no. Great. Don't give people that image. <laughs> you as Burt Ward Robin would be really scary. And just wrong. It would definitely would be for me as well. But anyways, folks, uh, this has been the DCO Sourcecast. You can, of course, find us at facebook.com slash the DCO Sourcecast. You can find us on the Twitter at DCO Sourcecast there. And you can find the audio version of the podcast at uh, trickslight.com and on iTunes. Uh, Crappy's not here, so I'm not going to give him any credit for today's show. Uh, <laughs> since, since he's not here. Um... But you can, of course, find me, uh, you know, Super Patriot at YouTube.com slash The Dice House. I'm also on Facebook.com slash The Dice House. You can find me on the Twitter at The Daddy's House there. And you can find me here streaming along here streaming at the new home of the DCO Sourcecast at Twitch.tv slash The Daddy's House. That's it. DCO Sourcecast. New home of the DCO Sourcecast. At twitch.tv slash dice house. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. That's what I meant to say. Uh, but, but uh, great, that was a good point, though. I will, uh, you know, put in that request to SJ about us needing a litter box lair item. 
So, and uh, no, Jarrett, this is 207. 207, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bye, Smurf. <laughs> oh, man, that was mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Illusion, oh my god, Meps was, he was trolling! <laughs> he goes live in five minutes, I swear to god, I'm gonna scream now. <laughs> Anyways, everybody here, uh, thank you for uh, stopping by and listening. Uh, I really appreciate it, especially through the little buffering issues and the ups and downs that we sometimes have with this damn thing here. Um, hopefully, either XSplit, Twitch, or my internet gets their heads out of their asses so we don't have continuing issues like that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thanks again for stopping by. I greatly appreciate you guys. Um, I know it's a short one, but you know what? You get shorter ones when it's just me here talking. <laughs> I, ain't got, I ain't got somebody that I got to argue with. So, hopefully Crappy comes back next week. I got a feeling we're going to have some big news next in the next couple of weeks here. Uh, and um, we'll be able to have Crappy on here to hear his opinion about it and see if it turn, turns him around on the game or not. I don't know. We'll have to see. It depends on, depends on when they announce it. But, yeah. For everybody out there and all that, go to Crappy's uh, Twitter and everything and yell at him for not coming on the show. Keeping up his co-host duties. Right? Troll him. Troll him on Twitter. At Crappy Heels. Anyways, I will catch you guys later. Thanks again for stopping by. Until next time, y'all take care. Bye.